Now, the next judge is actually, this is seriously my favorite story in the Bible, by the way. I was asked this on one of the podcasts I was interviewed on. They were like, what's your favorite? Samson, judge number 13, is my motherfucking favorite. Lucky 13. This is the Samson, Samson with the hair? This is Samson with the motherfucking hair, man. This is this judge. This story is about to happen. I love that guy. This is about to happen. So, okay, after a string of really boring judges, um, they get subjugated by the Philistines for like 40 years. And by the way, if you're wondering, who are the Philistines? Like, did you ever study Roman history? Remember when they were fighting the Carthaginians and all those people? Like the seafaring no. people? No. Have you never studied any history whatsoever? What do you know other than fucking fiction? Nothing, really. Okay, fine. Well, anyways, if you've ever heard of Carthage, these Phoenicians, well, those are pretty much the Philistines. So, they were just like the seafaring peeps. They were the guys of the boats. Always staying near fucking, you know, towns with waters. But anyways, the Jews get sort of conquered by these guys for 40 years. Now, there's a childless man by the name of Manoah. who lives in a town called Zora. None of these you need to remember cause for any specific reason. But he receives good news in the middle of the night. His wife gets visited by an angel who predicts that they will have a child. And that if this child is... Like, if you never cut this kid's hair, if he never drinks alcohol, and, he, and if he never walks over a dead body, he will have superhuman strength as a result. Sounds like Justin Bieber. <laughs> now, he cut his hair, man, a few times. Yeah, it's true, eh? Could you imagine if you, if you had a child and never in his life did you ever cut his motherfucking hair? Like, there is a maximum length to hair, by the way. You know, that's why people who hold Guinness records have, like, a special kind of hair. But I think the longest it gets for most people is right down to about a little lower than your ass. It's about as long as it'll go. Princess length. So this is what Samson looks like. So he's what's called a Nazarene. That's the fucking, you've never drank, you've never cut any of your hair or shaved or anything. No metal has ever touched your body. And you have supernatural strength as a result. So, but here's the deal. Manoah's kind of confused by what his wife says. And uh, let's just say a little bit skeptical about this whole claim. You see, back when people had some skepticism about them? Yeah. Apparently that's something that only lasted a few hundred years. <laughs> so Manoah sort of like prays to God and he's like, all right, can you just come bring an angel back and he can explain this shit a little bit better? Then my wife is telling me, because I don't get this. You tell me never to cut this fucking kid's hair? That sounds kind of crazy to me, right? So this angel appears. But here's the thing I want you guys to remember. Angels, no one knows they're angels when they appear. So they don't have wings. They don't look obvious. They're just a dude who happens to be an angel. Okay? So that's why everyone's confused. Because at first when this angel appears and tells him that, you know, lays out the same rules... And then, you know, Mano is so confused, and he's like, well, I'm going to slaughter a goat for you. And the angel's like, okay, but I'm not going ha- to eat any of it. I don't know why that's important, but he's like, I don't want to eat any. It's like, apparently, they don't eat fresh slaughtered goats. So he takes this offering, and, you know, he asks the angel before he gives him, what is your name? And the angel's like, bitch, you wouldn't even get it if I told you. So he's, like, got one of those mysterious names. You know, every once in a while, celestial beings seem to like to do that. There was an episode back in one of the early Bible stories where God's like, I can't tell you your name, for ye shall not comprehend it. I'm like, well, just say it. I don't care if I comprehend it. If it sounds like fucking gibberish, then I'll be like, it's gibberish. Whatever. But, like, what are you, like, don't respect my intelligence or something? Like, it's... <laughs> it's something very snarvy, like, snarf, snarf. <laughs> Bling. You wouldn't even fucking get it if I told you. It's like, well, why don't you just try, man? What's the worst that's going to happen? It's like such a hipster answer. I know, I know. I also love, you know, like when Moses goes to the bush and he's like, what is your name? Because like, apparently, I think back in the day, everybody always asked your name. It's like pretty much the form, the best form of ID you had back in the day, right? It's like, who the fuck are you, bro? And the first time the bush answers is like, you know, my, I, I am who I am, yo. Like, what, what? Are you playing games, man? What is up with you? I want. I'm. Not, you couldn't comprehend it. I am who I am. 
fuck you, man. Fuck you and your games. All right, so he brings it to the Mr. I can't tell you what my fucking name is because you wouldn't understand. So he puts down the goat offering, and then all of a sudden it bursts into flame, and the angel fucking takes off with the flames too. I, I don't know how that works. They don't really describe the imagery very well, but I guess he disappears with the flame. And now both Manoa and his wife are like on the ground. They're like, we're going to die. Sound familiar to you? Yeah, they do it too. And they're like, this is really bad. And then the wife is like, who I kind of respect by now. She's like, look, all right, if he wanted us dead, we'd be dead by now. So obviously it's probably good news. Because he did tell me that we're not supposed to do anything that seems normal with his kid. Like cut his hair or give him liquor, you know, when he's noisy. So they have a kid, and they name him Samson. And Samson is one of those, like, I, I don't know, he, he seems like one of those kids who just tells his parents what he wants, Right. Because when he's a teenager and he sees, like, this really attractive Philistine woman, he goes over to his dad and he's like, I want her. Get me her. And it's not even a conversation. It's like, I want her and you're going to fucking do this because I'm Samson. So the dad's like, all right, uh, okay, whatever. At first he objects but because they don't like foreign people. They're racist. But they're like, all right, whatever. You know, he's going to probably beat me up if I don't do it. He's probably afraid of his own child. So, uh... They, they, they head over to the town where she's staying, and on the way, Samson sort of like wanders off to a nearby vineyard to steal grapes, and all of a sudden, a big lion fucking ambushes him, and he, he basically tears his face in half. Tears the lion's face in, right in half, and it fucking dies. But he doesn't tell his parents, and they walk back into town, because I guess it's not a big deal. And, uh, you know, like, they, 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 they meet with everyone, and, like, the arrangements are made. And, you know, like, they're set to marry. So, after a little while, because I guess these things take a little while, he's walking back to town, and he sees the lion that he killed, and there's apparently a beehive in the carcass. Now, I, you know, I don't think the authors of the Bible really understand how bees like to do things. But I'm I'm betting that a lion's carcass is not the best place to have a bee at. It's cool, cool imagery though. It's cool imagery. So, you know, like there's this carcass with all this bee and honey and so he just grabs some because, you know, he's Samson. He doesn't have to ask for permission. He just takes Samson takes bitch. So he takes some honey, he eats it, and he brings it back to his parents and he gives it to them. But again he does not say he doesn't he doesn't tell anybody where he got the honey or what the fuck like the weird story of it he just keeps it to himself. So, okay, it's, the, it's, it's about to be the wedding, and Samson throws a big party. And, like, he invites a whole bunch of, like, townsfolk that he doesn't know to the party. And during it, he sort of, like, tries to make a wager. He's like, I bet you 30 shitty robes and 30 nice robes. I don't know why. The, I guess he just needs more. He needs a wardrobe for his wedding. He's like, I bet you 60 robes. The, uh, like, I can ask you a riddle, and you won't solve it. So they're like, okay. Let's do it. So I'll, I'll give you the riddle, and you can tell me if, if this sounds fair to you. From the one who eats comes something to eat. Out of the strong comes something sweet. It's like a riddle that only he would get. Yeah. This is a bullshit riddle. So, you know, everyone's kind of peeved. After a couple days, what they do is they take his bride, and they put her to the side, and they're like, okay... If you don't get him to tell you the answer, we're going to kill you and your dad. Jeez. This is some good wedding guests. So um, she goes back and she starts nagging him. Now, i got to tell you, here's the thing. Samson, his only vulnerability was naggy women. Okay? Oh, it's just another case of the Bible saying don't trust women. Don't trust women. So she starts to nag him and nag him and nag him. He's like, you don't love me. You won't tell me the answer to this riddle. So finally he acquiesces. Tells her the answer, and then, you know, those 30-some-odd thugs, because everybody likes the number 30, uh, come over and they're like, the riddle is a, you know, a lion. And, and, like, fucking Samson is furious, and he's like, if you hadn't fucked my wife, all, which he calls a cow, he calls her a, you know, he's like, if you hadn't fucked my heifer, he means literally his wife. So. He's like, you wouldn't know the answer to this motherfucking riddle. So I guess they didn't just threaten her. They probably raped her. Anyways... So he, he travels to the nearby town of Ashkelon. You may have heard it a few times. I mentioned it in the last one. It's like one of the nearby towns. So he goes to that nearby town, and he murders 30 innocent people to take their robes so that he can pay his debt. 
<laughs> oh, I don't remember that part of the Samson story. They don't have that in the cartoon version. Right. So he goes back to live with his parents, and he's, like, really all mad. But once his head cools down a little bit, he travels back to Timna, which is where his wife is, uh, with a goat offering and a desire to fuck. He's pretty much horny. I don't even know if he really wants to sort of, like, get back. He just wants to fuck her, right? This is how Samson is. So he arrives at his father-in-law's house, but his father-in-law is like, oh, I didn't know you still wanted her. I kind of married her off to your best man. And now you know why a best man is around. Ta-da! The best man is there to marry the chick if you are if you back out. Yikes. Yeah, so pick your best mate carefully. Because if you get cold feet, he's going to fuck your wife. <laughs> So, yeah, he tells her that she's married off. So Samson's really, really peeved. And he's like, I will not be held responsible for my actions. Like he has before. He killed 30 innocent people. He's not... This is not a man who is responsible for his actions. Ever. So he just goes to the forest and he magically captures 300 foxes. I know, that's a lot of foxes, right? But, you know, he's Samson. He's got superpowers. So he captures 300 foxes and he ties a torch... To their tails, and he sets them, uh, uh, you know, loose on the fields, and they all fucking burn down. Now the Philistines are not too happy about their, you know, grain fields and food crops being destroyed, so they take revenge on Samson's father-in-law, because I guess that's just someone who knows him, not like they were friends or anything. So they burn down his house and, uh, you know, kill all his loved ones, including the woman that Samson wanted to fuck, and this makes Samson very angry because he wanted to bang her real bad. <laughs> so he goes into a berserker rage, kills a shitload of them, and then he goes to hide out in a cave. So now that he's disappeared, the Philistines, they start raiding some of the nearby, like the nearby town of Le- Lehi, and they're like, you know, and, and, and the, you know, the tribe of Judah sort of like goes to Samson and they're like, look, man, you've angered these dudes and they're, they're taking it out on us. And Samson's like, look, it's just payback. But the tribe of Judah's like, we have to deliver you to these guys or else they're going to continue to kill us. So Samson's like, okay, I'll come with you guys. You can tie me up, but you got to promise that you're not going to kill me. So they're like, all right, we're not going to kill you. So they deliver them. They deliver Samson to the Philistines, and the Philistines are all like, yay, we capture Samson. This is a happy day, and blah, blah. And then all of a sudden... The Spirit of the Lord, and you know what? I feel like I should say the power of Grey Skull, because that's a little bit clearer. The power of Grey Skull takes fucking Samson over, and he snaps the fucking ropes like a twig, grabs a donkey's jawbone, and then murders a thousand Philistines with a jawbone. See, now that's the part that I that I wish like you could have like a really cool Matrix style movie rendition of that scene just ripping a jawbone right out of a donkey's head and just killing a thousand dudes with it <laughs> i gotta tell you though i mean like a jawbone is that the best weapon i would have just taken his femur or something why a jawbone i'm sure back in the day it's like that was like a standard visual it's like picking up a rock and, and smashing somebody with it there's like always but you know bones around you pick up a bone and you club someone with it but a jawbone is pretty badass Yes, maybe it, it seems like a makeshift brass knuckle, or I, I'm not quite sure what. Like, what would the? How would you use a jawbone from a donkey? It's not like they have really sharp teeth. Well, it's long enough, so you grab it on one end. Maybe some of the teeth are falling out, but on the back end, I'm sure they've got like jagged kind of things, so you can slash and club with it. Ooh, no one said it was a. It was like a complete jawbone. It could have been a fractured, super sharp draw, jawbone. Very true. It could have like a nice sh- stabbing edge. So it's pretty much a shank. Is what you're telling me. Sure. A shiv. It's like a combination of everything. It's like a saw, a club, and a shank. It's like a super shiv. <laughs> okay, so he kills a thousand Philistines, and he's all thirsty and shit like that. And then he, you know, because Samson is used to asking God for shit. And he's like, God, I'm fucking thirsty. Give me some water. And then all of a sudden, God, like, makes water appear out of geyser. Because if you kill a thousand Philistines, apparently God's going to, like, give you whatever the fuck you want. And at that time, it was water. So he names the place the spring of the one who cried out, rather than the place where I killed a thousand people with a jawbone. And uh, Samson rules for 20 years, pretty uneventfully, in fact. 
uh, until he travels over to Gaza uh, to have, uh, like, you know, a fuck on with a local prostitute. Let's just say that Samson has an appetite. He likes to kill and he likes to fuck. That's who Samson is. He's like Conan. Is he not like Conan? Yeah, he's always. I always kind of like when I think of Samson, I think of He Man for some reason. Well, that's why I said Power of Grayskull, right? Look, it makes sense. Yeah. He's like Power of Grayskull with Conan's unrelenting like sexual drive. I mean, the reason that we like this story so much is that it has like kind of a like a Greek overtones to it. I always found that those mythos were were much more entertaining. The stories were were they made a lot more sense, and they were, you know, from from start to beginning, the storytelling was like a lot more solid. A lot of these Bible stories, they feel like you know a Chinese romance. We're just well, not just that. Sometimes it's so short that I'm like, it's not really a story. You know, I almost want to apologize. Sometimes saying, you know, these are not really great stories. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to try to say it in, like, the most entertaining way possible. Because let's all get through this. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's all just get through this. So, okay, so he goes to fuck a prostitute. And while he's in town, like, you know, a whole bunch of the locals are like, all right, we're going to set up a trap for Samson in the morning and we're going to fucking kill him. But, you know, true Conan slash, you know, Power Grayskull style. He right after he get, he finishes getting his fuck on, he just walks out of town, rips the gate off, and just like you know tosses it aside, and then that's it. Now, a little while later, he falls in love with a woman named Delilah. This name should sound familiar to all of you who've barely read the Bible. Samson, Delilah. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Here's the Delilah story, and it's gonna just totally blow your mind. What you're like, why? All right, so the Philistines hear that, you know, Samson's got a, uh, a a kind of like thing for her, so they go to her and they they offer her a thousand one hundred pieces of silver. If she gets them to, if she gets him to reveal the secret of his strength, I, I want to remind you guys: how many pieces of silver did it take to buy land? Thirty. This is a hundred and, you know. This is a thousand one hundred of these. Yeah, this is like thirty-five Jesus betrayals worth of silver. This is a lot. This is sort of like millions of dollars. Okay, so clearly, she has a financial incentive. So you know, Delilah hooks up with Samson. Blah blah. They get together, and then she starts to nag him about the source of his power, using that familiar line of like, you know, I thought we trusted each other. Blah blah blah. All right. So she starts nagging him, and at first, he says, well, here's what you do. You take seven undried bowstrings, and you tie it around me, and I'm going to be as weak as a girl. So he falls asleep, she ties him up, and then all of a sudden, she sort of wakes him up. He's like, watch out, the Philistines are here to get you. And of course, he breaks these things like they're twigs, and then he just laughs. Ha, 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 you know, I made a fool of you. And then she's like, oh, you, me, you big me, you made fun of me. So she continues, this happens, by the way, a countless amount of times. I don't know if I should go through all of them, because at one time it's like, oh, use my hair. Oh, use, like, new rope. It's all this, and then every fucking time he goes to bed, she fucking ties him up, and then he just breaks through, and he's like, ha-ha, I tricked you, you're dumb. (laughs) But eventually, the nagging gets to him. She just nags and nags, and finally, he tells her the truth. Why? I don't know. Maybe there's a parable in this about never telling your wife the truth. Maybe. Don't tell that bitch one word of the truth. That's what the Bible says. But yes, sure enough, he falls asleep, she cuts off all his hair, and he gets captured by the Philistines who gouge out his eyes... And then put him to work grinding wheat with, like, you know, instead of a donkey doing it, like, you're just pushing it. So he just does does that for a long time. Like, actually kind of like in Conan the Barbarian, where he does the exact same thing. Yeah, totally like Conan. Yeah. He's grinding that fucking wheat. And, like, Conan gets all super mega fucking strong again, and his hair starts to grow. And then a few years later, the Philistines are having, like, a pretty badass party or something like that. And they're all drunk, and they're like, bring Samson out, because... You know, I guess he's a big deal. So by then, you know, Samson's got a long thing of hair. And they bring him out and, you know, they're all like, yeah, they jeer him. They're like, we, we're the winners. 
So he goes over to his guards and he's like, can I just lean by these two pillars because I'm really tired? And, you know, like, he's a blind guy. What do they have to fear? So he's just leaned by the pillar and he's like, okay, God, here's the deal. Fill me with the power of Grayskull and I'm going to kill every single one of these motherfuckers. And I'm going to bring this down on me. And it'll be all for your glory. Nothing but humans being murdered. And God's like, it's cool with me. And then, bam! He's given the power, fucking knocks down the tower, and everyone who is laughing at Samson dies. And they get 9-11. They get 9-11. Pretty much, actually, because there's about 3,000 people. So, yeah. Samson 9-11s them. And here's the thing. This is the end of this is the end of the judges, but it's not the end of judges, per se. Right? So there's no more judges beyond Samson. 